welcome to The Red Velvet Woman. This is a podcast for women who want to build a beautiful life after toxic narcissistic relationships. I am obsessed with assisting these women who are on the verge of change to help them transform their lives by getting unstuck, stepping into your power and unlocking the best version of you and ultimately fulfilling your potential after breaking free from your narcissistic ex. I'm going to help you empower yourself to heal, recover and redesign your thoughts and energy so that you flourish into the beautiful and amazing person you always were underneath and are going to be again. But this version of you is going to be bigger and better. This is for those babes who are ready to leave their limits at the door and level up. Your life is about to change, so get ready. I have personally gone from confusion to clarity and from survive to thrive. And guess what? So can you. I am your host, Olivia Powell. I'm a life coaching student, a registered nurse and midwife, business owner, YouTuber, and the creator of The Red Velvet Woman. I am so happy that you're here. Let's do this together. Hey, beautiful ladies, and welcome back. I am in a very high vibe today as I start off this podcast. I have actually had a few people ask me, what does the Red Velvet Woman actually mean? And so if I've got a couple people asking me that, then that probably means that you're wondering the same thing. So let me share with you today about what the Red Velvet Woman is all about and explain the meaning behind the name and the concept. So initially, the Red Velvet Woman was a metaphor or an analogy that I came up with when I was on the path to discovering my true authentic self after picking up the pieces in my own life after my own relationship fell apart. I chose the name the Red Velvet Woman because red is a very strong and bold color. And the reason why I chose velvet is because the texture of velvet is very soft and that was meant to represent different sides to myself. So, for example, the softer, gentler side of my personality, but also on the contrast, the strong and bold part of my personality. And of course, there's lots of different in between parts to ourselves, but I wanted to focus on these two specifically. So it made sense to put these two things together. I remember thinking, okay, Olivia, what is soft? And I thought, velvet. And then I thought, what's bold? Like what color is a really bold color that I like? And I was like, red. So I thought, ooh, red velvet. And then I thought of cupcakes and cakes and I'm like, well, I love them too. (laughs) And then I took it a step further and I was like, you know what? I like how this is kind of playing out. I'm going to add woman at the end because it's supposed to represent the intertwinings of those two aspects of myself into one. So that equals the red velvet woman. And I just thought, yep, that's it. That's the name. That's what I want to use. This just kind of makes sense to me, you know, the red being very bold, the velvet being very soft. I know I've got those two parts to my personality and I just wanted to kind of put it in a title and that was what came to me and that's what I decided to call it. (laughs) The Red Velvet Woman at its core is all about embracing and accepting all different aspects and contrasts of yourself after narcissism. So yes, your flaws and all, your strengths, your weaknesses, all that sort of stuff. It's about living an authentic life of who you really are not who you've been told you are by the outside world or by the narcissist in your life. It's about learning to just be. Be yourself, be in the moment. It's about freedom and living your life on your own terms. And it's also about celebrating how far you've come already while also aspiring and or working on yourself to aspire to be the best person that you want to be after narcissism, after the effects of narcissism. I think I came up with the concept when I was washing my hair one day or driving. I can't quite remember where I was, but I just remember the thought and going, yes, that's it. That's what I'm calling it. And I've never really doubted the name or thought maybe I should call it something else. It's just always stuck with me. So that's all there is to it. I'm just sticking with it. And when I was thinking about this, when I was washing my hair or driving, I was just thinking about all the different parts of a person that add up to who they are today. And it got me thinking about all the different sides and the facets to our personality and also All the different hats we wear in our everyday lives that make you, you and what makes me, me. I know for me, I wear a lot of different hats as probably do you. You know, there's Olivia, the nurse or midwife. There's Olivia, the sister. There's Olivia, the daughter, the friend, the work colleague, Olivia, the woman, Olivia, the millennial, Olivia, the cat mum, the single woman, the loving relationship, Olivia, Olivia, the life coaching student, Olivia, the introvert, the extrovert and all that sort of stuff. You know, we are multifaceted people and we're multidimensional, complicated human beings who can't and shouldn't just be pigeonholed into one stereotype, category or label. I knew I had a softer, gentler side, but I also knew I had a stronger, bolder side. And some people call this the feminine energy and some people call this the masculine energy. Either way, I liked both of them and they both have a place at different times in my life for different contexts. 
But when I was with Hugo, my ex-narcissist, I always felt shoved into the soft side box and I could never really fully express my bolder, stronger side. I was constantly denied a huge part of myself. In fact, I was probably denied multiple parts of myself, if I'm being honest. And it did make me feel squandered and oppressed. And when I broke free, I rediscovered this stronger, bolder side to myself and I missed that side. It had been a long time until I'd seen that girl. (laughs) Even though it had previously conflicted with my relationship with Hugo, I learnt that I wasn't allowed to access that side of myself because I knew that there would be consequences from Hugo. He didn't like seeing that part of me, that strong, strong strong-willed, determined woman that would say no and have boundaries and standards. He learnt or he taught me to, yeah, squander that part of myself into this little box and put it away. And I didn't really realise it. It's, it's, it was kind of eroded over time. It wasn't just one day he said, no, I don't like you doing that. It was kind of uh, an unspoken thing through all the different disagreements and arguments and behaviours and events and stuff like that. These two particular parts of myself I used to think were opposing and conflicting. And now I realise that that isn't actually the case. Instead, I can choose to embrace those two sides and all the other parts of myself or different sides to myself as well. And they can work in unison or they can come out at different times in your life. And that is a good thing. I finally just wanted to stop denying those parts of myself and instead accepting and embracing them and all the other parts of myself that made me me. I just wanted to embrace the softer, gentler parts of myself and the stronger, bolder parts of myself. I had been soft and gentle for so long, but when things were heading south, my stronger self appeared. She popped her head up and she carried me through to the end, and I was so glad that that happened. Typically, narcissists like to figure you out, so to speak, and point out your flaws and hone in and highlight your insecurities and your weaknesses, whatever it is that pushes your buttons or makes you feel bad about yourself, suppress yourself or shut down certain parts of yourself so that you are molded into what the narcissist wants you to be. And they play on these to disadvantage you in some way and simultaneously advantage themselves in the process. I want you to know that you don't have to hide or downplay those parts of yourself. I know that for me, I felt like I had to hide and downplay the stronger, bolder part and amplify the soft, gentle part. I felt like I had to showcase those for him and I couldn't really be 100% myself. And you know what? You shouldn't have to hide parts of yourself for the one that you love or the one that you think you love. Loving someone is loving everything about them, not just the parts you want to see. You can't half love someone. And if you do, that isn't exactly a healthy love, is it? In a normal, healthy relationship, sure, you might not like your partner sometimes. They might have done something that day that kind of irritated you, like they might have forgotten something at the grocery store that you asked them to pick up on the way home. And, you know, that sort of day-to-day normal sort of stuff. But you still love them and you still accept everything about them, even though they've done something to kind of frustrate you, irritate you or annoy you. However, in a narcissistic relationship, loving a narcissist is a little more complicated than that. (laughs) It's not simple love. There is nothing wrong with accepting and embracing all parts of yourself. This is a safe place to embrace and accept all parts of you. Every area, every nook and cranny of yourself, the parts we love and the parts that we don't find as lovable. So I started researching what red, the color red, symbolized and what sort of emotions it evoked because all colors apparently have an emotion that they evoke. So for red, it actually evokes strength, passion, love, courage, confidence, intensity, energy, motivation, heat, excitement, action, speed, power, stimulation, heart, and also boldness. These are all the qualities that you already possess somewhere inside of you. And I just want to help you bring out more of those in your life. You, my sister friend, are automatically strong for what you've been through. And the color red is supposed to represent that. I also kind of like the color red because it reminds me of like a stop neon sign at the lights. You know, Um, when the light turns red, you stop, you take a look around before it turns green and then you, you know, cautiously proceed or you're supposed to. (laughs) It's got to be red before you can go green. So this to me represents a time in your life that you could reevaluate, look at where you're at, think about what you want and then take action from there. And when the light goes green, you go right ahead. This might be a time to find and attract healthy love or deal with your quote unquote stuff before entering any future relationships. So you don't bring any baggage 
into that relationship that's going to hinder you. Here at the Red Velvet Woman, it's about being soft as velvet and being strong as the color red and everything in between. This is an all-encompassing concept. This got me thinking, wouldn't it be incredible if women decided and chose not to deny themselves or not allow someone else to suppress or deny the inner parts of themselves that makes them them? Because by doing this, you're not really being who you really truly are. You're allowing someone else to dictate to you what you can and can't be. You're allowing someone to tell you what is or isn't acceptable about yourself. And this is really something that you should be able to decide for yourself. This should come from you and not them. And this is your right. And this is self-determining. I wonder what life would have been like if I didn't allow Hugo to suppress me and if I had allowed my inner bolder self to have taken charge more. I wonder what your life would be like if you didn't allow your narcissist to dictate or suppress you from who you really are inside. Imagine if more female targets had this mindset, because if more did, then that would generate a positive fundamental culture change in the world of narcissism. Imagine if all the women and all the targets affected from narcissists knew what it took to turn things around, to feel better about themselves, to get their lives back on track. Imagine if all those women who were feeling justifiably bitter, resentful, angry and wrong done by were actually able to rise above emotionally and get back up on the horse and take the reins back to excel themselves in a more positive, productive and happier way of living. Wouldn't that be incredible? I think of it like this. Imagine there's a woman and she's looking at these two mountains and in between these two mountains is this disgusting, cold, wet, dark, smelly swamp with flies. And she needs to get from mountain one to mountain two. And instead of wading through the swamp to get through to the other side, there was a bridge that she could walk on to get her there quicker and easier in a lot less of a smelly sort of way so that she could bypass, you know, trudging in the wet, odorous swamp. If she walked the bridge instead, sure, yeah, she might get a whiff of the smell, but at the end of the day, she hasn't got to spend as long down in the trenches getting dirty feeling smelly and gross, cold and alone to get where she needed to go. Which route would you rather take to get to your destination? Trudging through the water or taking the bridge? I think it's kind of obvious. Well, this is what the Red Velvet Woman is for, to help you get to the other side and to bridge the gap from where you are now to where you want to be and celebrate that. As you probably know by now, I am studying a diploma in life coaching and the philosophy of life coaching is that they believe that people as a whole are actually capable and whole, not broken, incapable, or in need of fixing. It may not feel like it right now, but I'm here to remind you of this fact. You are not broken and you do not need to be fixed. You might feel like you are. You might feel like the narcissist has broken you, damaged you beyond repair, and that you're not going to feel normal again, or that you're damaged goods and no one will ever love you again. Well, I call bullshit. This is all negative self-talk and limiting beliefs. I'm not believing any of that crap. Instead of saying to yourself, I'm damaged, I'm broken, start saying to yourself, or at least start saying nicer things to yourself and having a better positive self-talk and say things like, I'm healing, I'm recovering, I'm rediscovering myself, I'm starting over, I'm a work in progress right now, I'm learning to love and find myself again, or I'm getting used to the new normal. This is a lot more empowering than saying things like, I'm broken, I'm damaged, I've got baggage, da 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 da, and then leaving it there. That's a disempowering thought pattern. The Red Velvet Woman is about reclaiming yourself, reclaiming your body, reclaiming your finances, reclaiming your spirit, reclaiming your own life. It's about owning all of it and celebrating every little baby step along the way of the journey. Celebrating the little wins of your day, your progress, your change in mindset. It's just imperative to living a happier healthier life after being affected by these people it's also about self-care and self-love practices because this is something you've gone without for so long because you've been putting his needs above your own and probably everyone else's as well while pushing your own needs to the side which works out perfectly for the narcissist because they're takers and generally speaking if you've been in a relationship with them you've been the giver It's about learning to trust your intuition and your instincts again. On some level, you are desensitized, disconnected, and disassociated. You get so used to the narcissist challenging you and questioning you and instilling self-doubt that you even start to question it yourself. You start to question your own reactions and your 
own thought patterns like is this really reasonable is this is this really as like the narcissist is describing this as being unreasonable but is this really unreasonable to have this request or to want this out of the relationship because the narcissist usually talks with so much conviction and they are very manipulating with their language and persuasive it's important to educate and inform yourself this helps build awareness and insight knowledge is power because you're going to be able to identify what's happened it's also about unlearning previously learnt behaviour, which has been unresourceful for you because that was dictated by the narcissist. It's also about learning to advocate for yourself, learning to get your voice back, learning to speak up for yourself again, rather than being oppressed, repressed and compressed by the narc, especially for natural introverts like myself. Yeah, okay, I might be a bit of an extroverted introvert, but at the end of the day, I like to be on my own to recharge my batteries. It's important to really understand what a healthy relationship is and what a healthy relationship looks like. My vision for the Red Velvet Woman is actually about building a community of women where friendship can be formed, where bonding is being built and it can facilitate a positive culture change, you know, celebrating a bit of girl power, strength, kindness, positivity, a place where all of that can flourish. I want this space to be a place where women can uplift themselves and others. It's supposed to be a supportive sisterhood, like a safe haven, celebrating womanhood, feminine energy, celebrate getting out of the crappy relationship and celebrating how far you've come and encourage you to keep going because eventually after your healing and recovery journey, you're going to be looking at the future and taking the skills and things that you've learnt for your future self and also allowing yourself to look back on all of this with peace, gratefulness and then excitement for what's ahead. The more people I've shared my story with, the more taken aback I am by how many women have come forward and told me about their toxic relationship or the fact that they once dated a narc or many of them or was married to one or divorced one or, you know, the narcissist was their baby daddy or they were in some sort of toxic relationship. And these are women who I would never have guessed (laughs) had actually gone through something like that because they're very strong and accomplished and they've clearly worked through a lot of their own stuff and evolved and are doing life in a much more beautiful way that doesn't even resemble what their previous life even looked like. If you haven't noticed my Instagram account already, you can probably tell that I like a bit of glamour and a bit of luxury and a bit of elegance. And that's just part of, I guess, how I see the Red Velvet Woman. The Red Velvet Woman is not a place for doom and gloom. I should also point out that I'm actually a life coaching student and not a clinical or trained psychologist or psychiatrist or a therapist. They definitely have a place in recovery and healing for sure. But for me, when I was going through it, I would have loved to have known about life coaches out there because I would have used their services for my own journey. And I just really wanted someone to help me get from A to B. And I wanted to, I wanted it to be really future focused and positive. And that's why this is part of the reason why I became a life coach in the first place. I'm just a girl that's gone through something like you and has come out the other side and knows a thing or two that can put a bit of a pet back in your step but I'm on the way to becoming a certified life coach. The information and the skills that I've learned and I'm still learning are just invaluable. As a life coach, we are trained to refer to a therapist if, we, if it's something that we're dealing with that we feel like is outside our scope of practice. Some people actually have a combined thing where they use a life coach and a therapist because they get something different from both types of practitioners. I'm not here to spread negativity or hate on the narcissist by being anti-narcissism. I'm definitely not a fan of narcissists, but I haven't and I choose not to spend all my energy hating them or generating more negativity because there's so much of that already out there in the world. Instead, I'm 100% for you. This podcast is for you and your development. I'm not here to break up marriages or relationships, but instead I'm here to help you uplift yourself and advocate for yourself and empower yourself, inspire and motivate you on your path into being the best and happiest version of you and your journey and aid you in course correcting or pivoting your life or redirecting your life so that you can get every ounce of happiness squeezed out and every positive emotion as possible during this process. This podcast is not all about them. It's actually all about you. The focus and spotlight has been on the Hugo in your life long enough and I'm metaphorically grabbing the floodlight and swinging it back around to you to help light you up and light up the path ahead of you. However, in order to do that, sharing information about the narcissist is obviously essential in gaining clarity and awareness and understanding. Sometimes you've got to retrospectively look back a little bit and kind of figure out how the narcissist operated, go back to the beginning a little bit and take it from there. It's imperative to be able to understand what happened to you. It's not necessarily taking three steps back and one forward. 
Instead, it's actually doing a double take over your shoulder and then redirecting your focus on what's ahead for you. I cannot overstate that enough. It's about ensuring peace of mind so that you can confidently walk ahead safely and confidently into the next chapters of your life. So I thought I'd talk about the logo a little bit. I've had a few compliments about that, so that's really nice. Um, The logo is actually a visual representation of the old me and the new me coming together, merged into one. They're intertwined. I wanted to kind of contrast and intertwine the different parts of myself into like the beautiful juxtaposition of old meets new. And as I've said, I kind of consider myself or I considered myself to be Olivia 1.0 and my middle self to be considered Olivia 2.0. But as of September this year in 2018, I now identify with Olivia 3.0. And I don't know how many more versions or level ups of Olivia's there's going to (laughs) be. One day there might be 20, but for now there's three. So if you have a look at the logo, it's got long brown hair. So that was definitely the old me. After my breakup, I actually cut all my hair off. I had a little short bob or a long bob, I should say. Um, But yeah, I'm at heart a long haired girl. The new thing I got was a tattoo on my left wrist. And I will share what that means at another date. I'm wearing a velvet dress in the cartoon logo and a hat because I wanted to kind of represent one eye being covered and the other eye being open so that you can kind of uncover It's supposed to be metaphorical for uncovering something underneath. And, you know, I'm a visual kinesthetic person, so I wanted something that represented the concept. So if you're feeling stuck and don't know where to turn or what to do, then I suggest you keep listening because it is going to help you see yourself and your life in a whole new way and transform your energy so much that you're going to feel electric and it's going to help you radiate the new you and help you get used to the new normal. I'm not here to tell you what to do or be your own personal judge but instead be your daily dose of happiness, be your cheerleader and your prescribed verbal happy pill for self-healing after narcissism. This podcast is kind of like my passion project. I want this to feel like a conversation and not like I'm like dictating stuff at you. You know, you've been there and you've done that with a narcissist before. You don't need that again. You don't need any more of that stuff in your life. And I get that. I would actually love to engage with you guys or for you to contact me. Tell me what you did or didn't love about the episode. Share with me what topics you want to hear about or you want me to cover or if you even want to hop on the podcast and have a chat, that would be great too. I just want you to know that you're not alone going through this. You're not alone. I am here for you. I'm going to show up through my podcast and I hope I can give as much value as humanly possible. If you're sending me friend requests on Facebook, just know that I probably don't know who you are. So feel free to send me a message and a comment and um, we can get chatting. So to put it simply, The red velvet one represents a mindset and a way of life. It's about embracing your soft side and your stronger sides and embracing everything that makes you you. It's about taking back your power. It's about reclaiming your life and revamping your identity and bettering yourself to improve yourself and your life along the way. By creating the red velvet woman, I actually hope this helps remove the shame and the stigma attached to being affected by this horrible disorder and basically provide a public service announcement to help raise awareness and help change public attitudes and behaviors on this social issue. So I really appreciate you guys listening today and I hope this kind of clears up what the Red Robot Woman is all about and what it represents. And I hope it is something that you find extremely valuable and you can get something from. So until next time, have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I would really appreciate it if you guys would leave me a review on iTunes. I ask this because your review will help the success of this show so that it has the potential to reach many more women out there who would benefit from hearing this message as podcasts have an algorithm too, just like Facebook and Instagram and other platforms out there. If you enjoyed this podcast or something has resonated with you, then be sure to subscribe so you're informed of every new episode that is released and so you don't miss a thing. And share the love by passing this on to someone you know who would benefit from hearing the free content of this podcast. I know that I personally would have benefited from hearing something like this when I was going through my own healing and recovery journey, and it would have propelled me forward further to feel a lot better sooner. So for more beyond this podcast, find the Red Velvet Woman Facebook page, ask to be added to the exclusive group, and come hang out with me on Instagram where you will find uplifting, thought-provoking quotes and pretty pictures, as well as my link to my YouTube videos. If you want to reach me, you can do so by emailing me at theredvelvetwoman at gmail.com. Until next time, much love, Olivia. Thanks for listening.